Okay, my name is Olaf Hartmann and I'm Managing Director of the Multisense Institute and uh, Founder and Managing Director of the agency Touchmore. And I have uh, presented a case where the, m the main topic was that the digital revolution, which everybody's talking about right now, has not overtaken human evolution. Which means that even in creating effective digital communication, you need to take all the senses into consideration. And since the beginning of this topic about 10 years ago through Martin Lindstrom, the brand sense study, it has not really fulfilled its promise of being very relevant in all the marketing departments around the world. And the reason I think uh, lies in that we have not made the case strong enough why multisensory optimization really adds to the business case. Why is it uh, economically successful? The main point is that I think it's, it must be possible to explain in, in 30 seconds in an elevator pitch uh, why sensory optimi optimization makes sense. And I've um, coined that into the Arriva model, which, um, which combines the five basic promises of sensory optimization, including sound, which is attention, recall, integrity, value, and action. So if you meet somebody who is in a marketing decision-making position and you ask him, um, why should I invest in sensory optimization? Uh, you can answer, if you want more recall for your message, if you want more attention for your marketing, if you want to make your brand message more believable or create more value perception in your product and in the end more willingness to buy, then we should talk. There are some very good examples um, how multisensory communication taken seriously has affected um, the business case. Uh, one widely known example is Singapore Airlines. And if you look at the customer satisfaction of this airline that is controlling the scent, the sound, the look of its brand appearance since the 70s, you see that uh, multisensory communication does pay off. There are many other examples which mainly come from product design, where hugely successful product design can be explained by using resonance fields, which are multisensory communi uh, communicated in a multisensory way. And where I see big potential, w because it has it is not being employed in a strategic way, is in brand communication. Most people think that multi sensory communication means you need to maximize all the sensory input and that's not the case. You need to find the right trigger. What is the, the buying motive? And try to look for sensory cues, sensory codes that you can use. And if you can use them earlier than your competitor, then you have a, a strong advantage. And if you can even if you say the same thing as your competitor and you're able to add one more sense, we know that the brain activity is enhanced by a thousand percent with effects on recall, integrity, um, value, and also willingness to buy. So um, looking for new channels in an over-communicated society, which include sensory ch channels, which are more implicit than the explicit communication of uh, look and uh, uh, text, uh, will be a strategy which will um, make the companies that adopt it more successful than their competitors in the future. Oh, wonderful, like an uh, exciting city. Many different sounds and uh, also other sensory inputs. Uh, it's what you feel is there's, there's lots of creativity here and um, you can also see from Berlin that perfection shouldn't be the goal, but um, enhancement of certain elements, yeah? That uh, perfection doesn't really satisfy, but, but uh, excitement is, is something that if you are interested, if you're young, for example, then Berlin becomes very exciting. But that depends on your, your motives, obviously, in life. And that's the same thing with products. So for some people, Berlin is very stressful. For young, energetic, creative people, it's a super place. Oh, the personal highlight was very easy. Last night we walked home uh, to our hotel and we actually met the most powerful woman in the world. 
Angela Merkel, who lives nearby. So that was the, so far the highlight of the Congress. But also the cases that were presented here, they were very impressive. Just saw the KLM case. Uh, very exciting people from all over the world. Um, and I'm very impressed in the variety of views and also the expertise which is uh, condensed here in this conference in one place. I think that if you look at a uh, comparison like complexity theory started in the 60s and it took 20 years until the 80s um, to make a relevant impact in organizations. And uh, I think today in the age of internet and globalization, I think it will become um, a quicker process, but we are 10 years now into the multi-sensory movement. And I think the time is ripe. I, see, I feel a growing interest from many fields, definitely from product sounds. Yeah, Product sound, many companies have understood how important product sounds is um, uh, Nespresso is, is, is using the crack of those little capsules to communicate how fresh the coffee is. And um, so to st strategically control these sensory inputs, many companies have understood. And I feel a growing interest and demand for complete customer experiences. That's a, um, a growing trend to look at the, at the touch point, the customer, the customer journey, and try to think of what is the relevant sensory signal that we want to send along that journey. So more interest and the trend is definitely in a more holistic approach. In the past, they were like silos. They were thinking about sound. They were thinking, thinking about uh, haptics. They were thinking about some taste if they were in the food industry. And now there are more and more companies thinking in a more holistic term, like how to create a multi-sensory identity. Uh, to have relevance in the boardroom, that uh, the CEO, not only the CMO, but the CEO wakes up and says, okay, if we want to be successful in the future, banking industry is a good example, we need to make ourselves emotionally relevant on all levels. And you cannot think about communication in the future without thinking about sensory inputs and the way we as humans um, perceive the world. You know, we still are multi-sensory beings, so, and companies have no choice. Basically, you cannot not communicate multi -sense in a multi-sensory way because every company has touch points, every company um, uh, emits sense, like willing or not. And the question is, the company that can control and manage these sensory inputs will be the most successful in the future. So if the CEOs actually understand the relevance and are willing to put the budget behind it, that would be a dream. Keep on dreaming. <laughs>